Well, hello! Welcome back! It's been a minute, hasn't it? It's been so long since I've seen you. Welcome! It's another episode of It Came From Craigslist! We're back! After a bit of a hiatus, we are back doing this series. This is one of the most fun things I like doing on this channel. One of the most fun things I like doing. Words are difficult, we need to drink more of this. Um, so if you're new to this series, somehow, if you're, if you're new to the Yammy Noob fictional multiverse, this is the show where people on our Discord server, uh, via our websites, um, they uh, go in and find uh, the internet's skeeziest, weirdest, and otherwise unsightly and strange motorcycle listings on Craigslist or other listing services. Today we are looking at Portland, Oregon. Uh, Portland is, I wouldn't say near and dear to my heart, I do like Portland, um, but it, uh, it's a cool city. I visited it in like 2013, like two times. I really liked it, I liked the scenery, I thought it was really cool. Um, but let's see what kind of shenanigans the bike market gets up to in Portland, Oregon. If you want the chance to submit some listings to me and to hang out with us while we look at all these different Craigslist bikes, hit the link below, go to yamminube.co, sign up and get registered. Uh, you also get some chances to win some free bikes, which is pretty sweet and it helps support the series. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty guys, kicking us off, Nicholas, one of our most active Discord users here, has submitted to us uh, the following. It says, my dear fellow yams, it would not be a proper it came from Craigslist without this. Therefore, I will start us off with the pinnacle of motorcycling. It's none other than a big old turbo Busa, baby. 325 wheel horsepower on this sucker on pump gas. On pump gas, dude. You go out to the gas station, put 87 in this thing, makes 300 horsepower to the wheels. Can you believe it? All right. So we've got the classic Busa Boy graphics here. It got the neon with the yellow. Oh, no, sorry, that's green. I'm colorblind today, apparently. That's green, the blue, the kind of monster energy uh, kind of scratches on the fairings, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's everything you want a Busa to be, right? The price is actually pretty cheap for these turbo, but it's really funny. So custom kind of crazy bikes like this, they're always end up being like a one-off project. You have no idea how to price it, right? I've seen turbo Busas going on Craigslist for anywhere from 12 to $30,000, so you never really know. This one at 16, I think, is decent, but again, it's just a one-off thing, so you have no idea how much it's actually supposed to cost. So let's see if we can see uh, the description on this. Oh, it is long, so we're not gonna read this whole thing. This guy says, put in my long-term five-year project up for sale. I'll do a brief rundown, but it would be best to see the bike in person. I can send videos of it on the dyno being run hard with no issues. Obviously, there will be no test rides without cash payment in hand, preferably an NHRA license. <laughs> this guy's like, okay, listen. Um, uh, you know, I'm not gonna let a beginner jump on my Turbo Busa and yeet himself into infinity. Um, that's hilarious. So. I mean, this guy actually, for, for what it's worth, is incredibly detail-oriented, it seems, from his listing. Um, I, I think this is your your advanced, maybe, you know, level 36 Busa boy. This is someone who knows how to write correctly and do everything correctly. Um, so it, it's looking pretty good. Uh, this is really funny, though. This guy says, I also installed the Dynojet Quick Shifter, which, frankly, is pretty rad. It is pretty rad, isn't it? Quick Shifters are great. Says the bike was sketchy enough to keep pointed straight with just rolling into the throttle, but a hard conventional shift would make it really unsettle the chassis as a result of boost purge and the subsequent respool. <laughs> that sounds horrifying. Oh my God. So if you want to yeet yourself into infinity, uh, you want to get yourself a nice Busa, this is it, dude. This is the Busa of your dreams. Let's, let's get some photos of it and take a look at it really quick. Got the stretch. Got the turbo thing on the, they got the turbo sticker on the swing arm, which is great. The graphics on point. I mean, this is it, dude. This is it, you don't need much more than this. Oh, the posting's expired, that's it. All right, next up on our list is one that I've picked myself. It's this 2000 Triumph Sprint ST. So the Triumph Sprint, AKA known as the 955, the uh, first generation triple, the 955cc. Um, 2000, I think, is a couple years after they started making them. I think they started making the 955s in the 90s, I can't remember correctly. Uh, but this here is your kind of, you know, old man sport touring uh, Triumph sport bike. Um, for whatever reason, Triumph's uh, Sprints and Tigers and those kind of bikes are owned by guys usually over the age of 35 and 40, and they just take such good care of it. Um, but I am thinking of the guy over at Revzilla, his name is Lance Oliver, who owns 
I think it's a Triumph Speed triple, and apparently it's super crusty, but he's put on like over 100,000 miles on it, which is amazing. Uh, okay, so this one, it's looking really good, man, from the photos I'm seeing so far. Paint's looking okay, looks like it was garaged. I don't see any signs of rust near the forks or the brakes. Um, it's a it's a good looking bike. Look at this thing, man. I like the I like the luggage that's paint matched to match the body. So I probably bought it from the factory or bought it at the dealership, which is cool. I always like a, a period correct mod like that. It's getting kind of funny nowadays. Uh, stuff from like the mid 2000s is like period correct because we're getting into the 2020s. So this is like a period correct early 2000s uh, sprint. Look at the seat. Look at the seat, not a drop of Gooch juice in sight. Nothing going on here, nothing but net on this seat. Look how pristine that is, my dude. That's excellent. The, the seat is completely put together. Immaculate 955. All right, let's read this. So 2000 Triumph Sprint ST 955 FI Triple. All services up to date and more. It's got new tires on it, chain and sprockets, fluid flushes. It says major service. It says major service with valve adjustment done. All the records in PDF has 45,000 miles on it. Yeah, this is great. For 3,400 bucks, this looks like it'll be a perfect, you know, old school kind of early gen sport touring Triumph. So if you're into that, you can't go wrong. Moving on. All right, so this one's a 2010 VFR 1200F. If you know about the VFR, it has a long history in Honda's lineup. It started out as the RC45, I believe, or maybe before that, uh, back in the 90s. I'm probably spouting a bunch of nonsense, but basically Honda's been making V4 uh, sport bikes for a while. The VFR kind of transformed over time. It used to be this sort of like racing, homologated, like proper super sport kind of motorcycle, but over time it became a bit of a sport touring machine kind of long haul tour kind of bike. Um, but the VFR 1200 is interesting because it actually comes with a uh, automatic dual clutch transmission. So it, it's not a, a regular clutch and, and shifter, which is, is makes it very maligned in the VFR community. Um, but I'd love to take one for a ride. I think it'd be interesting. 1200 cc is a V4 fun, can't lead you astray. But the, the automatic transmission in this, I think really stunted this bike's potential. Also, it's just kind of ugly. It's, it's, it's like the mid 2000s retro future type of thing. All right, so this guy says 2010 Honda VFR 1200F dual clutch transmission, all maintenance records, very clean, like new, blah, 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 owned, really hate to let it go, but recent shoulder and back for surgery forces me to sell. So he wants 6750 for it, so about 6800 bucks. It's got really low mileage, it's like 6500 miles, it's like nothing. Uh, I don't remember what these retailed for when new. I say that as if I was like looking at VFRs back in 2010 when I was 18 years old, but I wasn't. <laughs> um, I don't know what these retailed for new, but I, my gut is that it's priced a little bit high, but it is in really good spec. Um, it looks completely clean, nice and new, but it's gonna be hard to find the right buyer for this. So I don't know that this to me is, is kind of a pass. So moving on. All right, so this next one I picked out because I am a, a track enthusiast, track day junkie, whatever you wanna call it, Mr. Fast Boy track day kind of guy. Uh, this is a, it just says Ducati, $30,000. It caught my eye. I was like, let's take a look at this thing. So it's a 2009 uh, 999R. <laughs> so uh, I've talked about this bike before in the past. Uh, the 999 is uh, Ducati's uh, weird Cyclops looking motorcycle they made in the early 2000s to replace the 916, uh, 996 generation of bikes. So it was the Panigale of its day. Um, the 999, this one in particular is an R, which means it's one of the last editions, much rarer, much higher state of tune. This one in particular looks like it's been uh, very extensively prepped for track days. Um, it doesn't appear to be prepped for racing because I'm, I'm looking and I'm trying to see some safety wires uh, and I'm not seeing any safety wires uh, near where there's gonna be fluid. So whenever you prep a motorcycle for racing, you wanna make sure that all the bolts that hold things that have fluids in place are safety wired so that it doesn't like fly off whenever you crash the bike and get fluids all over the, the track. This is, in my opinion, an incredibly well prepped track day motorcycle. So if, if it's just a bike that's living on the track, this thing looks like it has everything in the kitchen sink thrown at it. I'm looking in right here in the engine, I'm seeing 
uh, updated coolant lines, which is really great. Uh, I don't think enough people do that, but it's a great touch to do on a track day bike because that's one of the first things that blow, I'm actually thinking of doing that to my 675R. It's one of the first things that like ends up blowing up on a track day bike is um, it's like coolant lines and that kind of thing. Uh, looks like he has, if we go back here, uh, the uh, racing dash right here. So it's an electronically linked dash because I think the 999R is so old that it probably had those analog uh, clocks on it. And this guy probably wanted a lot more features out of it. I'm seeing updated master cylinders, uh, different brakes, or maybe they came with those brakes, I don't know, but that looks updated to me. Tire warmers, which is really cool. And the, the big thing for me, I don't know if the 999R came with this suspension, but uh, it has an Olin's front with a gas, external gas chamber on it. That's a pretty trick part. You don't see that that often. And then what appears to be an Olin's uh, rear suspension as well. I don't think it's a TTX. I think it might be another unit because the TTX's uh, little can sits differently, I think. Um, but this is super cool. Uh, this is your kind of like very prepped. Actually, I, I, I can see his photo in the back over here where he's, he's flying by. Um, I really hope this bike was raced because it just looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is such a cool bike. I don't know if it's worth 30 grand. Uh, the thing that happens as well, like I mentioned with the turbo boost is, is people will uh, start kind of adding parts and adding love and adding a lot of stuff to their bike. But unfortunately that usually doesn't increase the, the resale value of a motorcycle. It just ends up making it more expensive to maintain and own. Um, but this is a super cool bike, man. This is really, really neat. And I think for someone who's doing track days, this would be amazing. I'm seeing a couple AMA stickers. I, it, it might be a race bike, but I don't know because I don't see any safety wires, but it looks like a extreme track day bike, which is great. So thumbs up for me. Moving on. All right, so Charlie Fox tried over on our Discord server, busted out this uh, 2009 Suzuki SV650, apparently 800 miles on the clock for 3,500 bucks. Let's take a look and uh, yeah, this poor little wretched Suzuki has just been relegated to the corner of a farm, apparently. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's just hanging out back there, uh, just just being wretched and being, oh, that's rough. That is rough. What is going on with these bars? The bars are like up here, bro. That's crazy. That is not, that is not factory. Those look like ape hangers. That's insane. That's like a good six inches of travel at the front right there for the bars. <laughs> um, nice little Suzuki thing there as if we needed to see that. Uh, yeah, just a rough bike. Um, let's, let's see what they say about it before we cast more judgment. Only 1,200 miles. 2009 Suzuki. Mm, I don't know, dude. Has a salvage title, no kidding. <laughs> the bike has not been used for three plus years at all. Custom bars to sit straight and enjoy riding. Okay, so I was right about the bars. That feels good, feels good, it was validated. Ready to ride in the original condition or current condition, but still has some cosmetic damage. Uh, you know, what's funny is, you know, it, it, since it's been sitting for three years, um, not only do you have to give it just like a good wash uh, to even see what you're working with, but you're, you're gonna need to do all the fluids on it. And you might need to check for if the oil's gunked up or anything like that. Like three years is a very long time. So if someone didn't put a uh, fuel stabilizer in that or a non-ethanol uh, having gas, it's gonna be gunked up on the fuel lines as well. So that, that'd be something to look out for if you wanted to do something like this, which personally, I would steer you clear of. I wouldn't get something like this. Uh, it says, besides that, the bike is like new. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like new, look at it. So you go to the dealership, they say, this is like new. It's just, it's just like new. Oh, that's great. 3,500 bucks for a Project SV is a lot of money, particularly considering that I found uh, this 2007 SV650 that actually runs and looks okay and is in good condition for $2,600. So don't get ripped off. Find something that looks more like this and you'll be in much better shape. Um, so just kind of segueing into this one, comparing the two listings, right? I don't think we've ever done that on the series, but uh, this bike, look how, look how pristine that is, man. 2,600 bucks, that SV looks great. Look at that. Frame looks clean, the engine looks clean. It looks like it's just been ridden and maintained and cared for and loved. That's amazing. So see, $2,600 gets you this, or you could go and spend $3,500 and get this, so. Be cautious, be cautious of what you get on Craigslist. Moving on. 
So this one I thought was a smoking deal if it uh, is actually what they're saying here. Uh, this is a 2013 Triumph Speed Triple 1050 for 4,500 bucks. But then he also says Street 675. So I'm trying to see what engine this has in it. I'm pretty sure it's the 1050. It does say speed right there on the side of the tank. Um, so it does say speed right here on the fairing. So I'm inclined to believe this is a 1050, not the 675. Um, this is really good, dude. Uh, unfortunately, it does look like it's been low-sided. That's probably why the price is so low, but that just looks cosmetic. Um, that doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, the Triumph Speed Triple 1050 is the spiritual successor to the 955 we were looking at earlier. So, huge honking triple-cylinder engine, gobs and gobs and gobs of torque. Um, so much torque you don't even know what to do with. You're just holding all these torques and they're just falling out of your hand constantly while you ride this bike. And I really love this uh, this this gold that it came with. Um, there's, uh, I think they sold a Street 675 in this one as well, but I, I love this gold color that the Triumph has. Uh, I think it's really unique to this bike. Um, so I think these bikes are awesome. This is a great buy at 4,500 bucks if it actually runs and, and does its thing reasonably well. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, you know it's, it's definitely a 20 foot kind of bike. You don't want to get up too close to it because it definitely has been beat up a little bit. Um, but you know, that's nothing that couldn't be fixed. Nothing that couldn't be fixed. Can you tell I'm a little biased towards the Triumphs? I just want to love them. I just want to give them a good home. Uh, Speed Triple is a sick bike, man. I'd love to have one in the stable one day. So it appears this one's at a, an actual dealership because it says we offer, we take trade-ins and financing and all that stuff. So it might be a little bit harder to get a deal, but pretty cool, pretty cool bike. Moving on. So Hilga Thor has found uh, something very, very interesting. I'm very interested in looking at this one. It's a 2012 Boss Haas Gangsta Trike. Uh, that hurt me to say, but I had to say it. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Oh, the posting has expired, but we have screenshots of it from when it existed. Okay. So 2012 Boss Haas Gangsta Trike, $35,500. $35,500. Do you know how many ship bikes I could buy for $35,000? At least 20. <laughs> I could run an entire race series of ship bikes for $35,000. Jesus, look at the skulls on the on the rear wheel. So yeah, it's a trike at the three-wheeler. Um, Jesus Christ. I'm pretty sure that's a V8 engine in it, which is amazing. Let's try to let's try to get some 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 uh, insight on this. Impress everyone that sees this trike. Certainly, 2012 Boss Haas Gangsta Trike. Why is it Gangsta? That is so cringy. <laughs> Low miles, 3,700. Chevy LS1, 330 horsepower V8 small block. Bro, I can turbo a Busa and get 325 wheel horsepower right now. I can do it right now. Okay. Uh, it's automatic transmission, upgraded cam, beautiful paint job, skeleton theme, chrome skeleton highway pegs and mirrors, upgraded chrome wheels, adjustable air shocks, the big trunk, because if you're rolling in the, in the gangsta boss hoss, I hate saying that word so much. If you're rolling in the boss hoss, uh, you gotta have a big trunk. Mustang seat, I don't know what that means, Lexan windscreen, purple LED engine and ground effect lighting, of course. Cause you gotta flex on the normies. You gotta flex on those stupid normies that don't have a V8 trike, but you do. Uh, and I love this at the end, only serious inquiries, please. Cash only. <laughs> no, you need to have 35 G's flat cash to come and buy this thing. Who is this for, bro? Who buys these bikes, man? I, I really wanna interview one day someone who owns something ridiculous and goofy like this. If you own a crazy ass, three-wheeled or turbo booster or something like that. I just want to talk to you. I want to, I want to open a dialogue. I want to discuss what it's going to be like. Um, please, I think that'd be hilarious. Um, so the Boss Haas Gangsta Trike. Solid buy, dude. Solid buy. So we got another one here, your, your wretched, forlorn sort of motorcycles. Uh, you got your 95 GSX 750F Suzuki sport touring motorcycle. Um, the photo, even even these like low res photos from afar already looks rough. The rear brake looks completely rusted out. The bottom of the bike right here with near the headers look completely crusty. The wheels look messed up. Um, this is a poor, poor, wretched motorcycle. This is a very unfortunate looking wretched bike. Um, no information whatsoever. Just a Suzuki GSX 750F motorcycle, 1995. 
boom, that's it, done. You know what it is, boom, just, you know, come and get it, it's over, that's it. Uh, hard pass on this one. You don't know what's going on with this bike. I think we got time for one more bike, so let's check out this last bike here. So again, another track day special. It's the 2011 GSX-R750 track bike here listed on the Portland Craigslist. Uh, the GSX-750, the Jigs are 750 to be honest, um, is in my opinion a great, 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 great uh, intermediate level track day tool. Um, I say that because it has the perfect blend of mid-range torque, but not the insane top-end rush of a leader bike. And if you're trying to really pick up lap times and really shave off time, the 750 could be a really, really great tool for you to learn. It's one of the reasons I like my 675R so much, which kind of competes with the 750. Um, it has that good mid-range punch uh, and enough top end power to keep you really entertained, but not enough to get you kind of out of control or out of, you know, in trouble. And you can really understand corner speed, how to really carry your bike through and really kind of understand how to lean it in when you have that kind of smaller package to work with. Uh, this is a great bike too if you, if you live near a track that is a little bit bigger, if you're near something like Eagles Canyon Raceway, like I am here in Decatur, uh, or maybe like Virginia International Raceway, or Chuck Walla, a track that's like medium to larger size, a bigger bike is gonna be more fun. I wouldn't take a 300 on Circuit of the Americas, for example, you're just gonna be, you know, never letting off the throttle. And that is fun, but at the same time, you do wanna experience some of that top end straight line speed. So uh, the Jixxer 750, great bike. Let's take a look at this one. So we're looking at the photos here really quick. Uh, the first thing I'm noticing is, you know, mismatch colors, which is I think is awesome on a track bike. I think it's great to make it like rainbow and crazy colored. Like that's kind of the point on track is to just make it as loud and crazy as possible. Um, looks like loads of little bits and bobs here and there. I'm seeing a transponder for a lap timer, I think right here for uh, an organization. So the, the, the unit I run normally, so I'll show you guys. This is my lap timer right here. It's a Solo uh, 2. Uh, this is a GPS-based lap timer, so you don't need a little transponder like this one, which I think that's what that is, uh, that actually the organization will use, and then when you pass and that clips, they'll tell you your time afterwards. This runs on GPS and activates automatically when you get on track and starts tracking your laps and gives you splits real time and all kinds of stuff. So this is what I use on track um, to, to kind of see my splits while I'm riding all that kind of stuff. So this one looks like it has a transponder. Um, what else we got going on here? Uh, a little little quick shifter going on, that's cool. I got a quick shifter right here, really clean looking chain. I like seeing that. The thing about track bikes, which is kind of funny, is people think that they're like, you know, beat up and you know, really wrung out. But honestly, track day guys take a lot more care of their motorcycle because they wanna make sure that it's working correctly at the limit. So don't be afraid of buying a track bike for track days because um, it's for that purpose. Now. Do not buy a track bike and take it to the street because that's just gonna be a huge hassle reconverting it back to the street. Probably not worth it. Um, he's got the spools here. Oh no, he doesn't have the spools. He's got the, the thing that you would normally put for the spools. Bad, upgraded brakes, that's great. Bigger brakes. Yeah, overall, it looks pretty clean from these photos. Uh, so this guy says, not street legal. Well, obviously, my dude. Uh, power commander tuned with quick shift, woodcraft engine covers and rear sets. Yosh exhaust with cat delete, ASV levers, blah, 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 extra rims and parts. This is a great buy, I think. Honestly, if you're trying to get uh, a good track bike, I, I would totally pick this thing up. This is great. So solid thumbs up for me. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you enjoyed our little excursion into the Portland Craigslist. If you want the chance to join up and have some fun with us and pick some listings for me to check out, uh, go ahead and hit the link below to yamanoob.co. Pick a tier that makes sense for you. You can join up on our Discord server. I'm in there literally every day and you can hang out with me, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.